This is the GTN Show, a warm welcome from Mallorca, head of the Ironman 70.3 event. It's a popular event on the European calendar, so give us a shout if you're out here racing. Well, we're also going to be discussing course records and how accurate the course measurement needs to be for the record to stand. Plus, we're asking, when is a triathlon no longer a triathlon? We also have, hot or not, our weekly poll, and with the race season in full flow, we've got lots of exciting results. Right, Heather, before we get stuck into the show, I understand you had quite an eventful weekend, a triathlon with a difference. I did. It was a Mad Hatter event and started with a swim, a 750 sea swim, which was pretty chilly, finished with a 5k hilly run. But in the middle, instead of cycling, which is my weaker event, I thought I'd change it up and it had stand up paddleboard. That sounds really fun. It was really fun. Sadly, I wasn't as good at stand up paddleboarding as I thought I might be. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times on holiday and it's a bit different when you're suddenly under pressure in your racing. And it's actually quite a bit harder than I expected as well. Uh, how do you feel now then after that? Well, weirdly, I like thought, you know, it'd be a bit of a rest for the legs because all I'm doing is just standing and, you know, I can swim hard and I can run hard and I can use my upper body for the paddleboard and then I can, you know, run a fast 5k. But I, I literally, everything was engaged, not just my core. My legs were shaking by the end of the paddleboard and I have still got doms in my quads. Like, I think it's what, four days later. So I, yeah, respect to stand up paddleboarders. Well, I understand you did pretty well though. I did okay. I was second second lady, and it was it was awesome to see an old school friend who I didn't even know was doing it, and she ended up beating me. And we first did biathlon together. I think it was like over ten years ago in South Africa. I convinced her to come out and do that, and then um, she does a lot of stand up paddleboarding. It turns out, and she flew past me on that. Well, I guess this all like poses the question. Uh, we have a lot of events these days called triathlon, mm -hmm. where they sub out a different sport, um, they sub out like one of the sports for a different sport. Um, they're still called triathlon. Are they really triathlons? Like I did a biathlon years ago. It's a modern, modern pentathlon version, but a triathlon version is very different. Yeah, and, and who has the trademark? I mean, I did triathlon when I was like eight or nine years old, which was, in my mind, it was a triathlon. It was shooting, it was swimming, and it was running, all separate. And But I didn't do a what we would call now a real triathlon until a couple of years ago. And who, who says what a triathlon is? Well, it would be really interesting to get your thoughts on this. So please do drop them in the comment section below. But moving on to the news this week, let's talk about Ironman Texas from a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, we had Ironman records, then we didn't, and then we did. Well, it even confused the winner. So Matt Hansen, who got what could have been a record, after crossing the line, he put a post up on Instagram saying, you know, a little bit disappointed because the bike course was two miles short and, you know, he didn't actually think it was an official record. Well, Matt then went on to say that he thought that the marathon was a verified course distance and that that record should stand. But it wasn't until a couple of days later that he put another Instagram post saying that he was obviously delighted that Ironman had decided to accept the records and he is now the world record holder. Well, it has opened up quite a big discussion in the world of triathlon around this idea of Ironman records. One minute, the athletes were celebrating great results, and the next minute, they were being kind of shamed for competing on this shorter course. But is it really their fault? I mean, I would actually arguably say that, short or not, Matt Hansen's performance is phenomenal. I mean, I think he really is one to watch out for at Kona. Yeah, and does it, does it matter? I mean, should each course just be ju judged for its course? And, should we have records for each individual course or maybe for each continent? I mean, even in swimming, for example, when you know a 200 meters is always a 200 meters, but they have different records because you have a 200 meter record for short course and a 25 pool and long course and a 50 meter pool. And that's such a tiny difference. And when we're looking at triathlon, we've got different currents in the swim. We've got different tides. We've got different wind directions on the bike. You know, there's so many, it, it differs year to year, even if the course is exactly the same. Yeah, well, I actually coming from IT racing, the shorter distance, I actually found it really odd when I came to like longer distance racing that everyone would ask you your time and yeah. your PBs. I never compared them on ITU, in ITU racing because there were so many variables. Every race was so different. Actually, some of my best performances were my slower times. Yeah. Um, so I personally, I think it should be by course rather than this overall time or PB. But I really do understand yeah. this whole like search for a sub eight hour yeah. Ironman. But then, you know, you go to Ironman Wales, you're never going to get yeah. a sub eight. So I know I was frustrated last year. You know, I did my first Ironman in South Africa and then obviously I did my second Ironman in Kona and I wanted to do a PB like desperately because, you know, compare my performance to myself. So it's against my personal best and I went slower, but in theory, you're most people saying, oh, you know, it's a slower course, so that's still good. It'd be quite nice if you could have like a ranking so you know, 
you know, what, what that would be as a real time in comparison. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Well, we could discuss this forever, but I think we should open it out to you guys with a weekly poll. So this week we're gonna ask you, should there be an Ironman record? And we're only gonna give you two options, nice and simple, yes or no, and you can enter that by clicking up here. And do let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. But now we have last week's we weekly do. poll. Well, we asked you last week what tire width you use. Yeah, and in last place, it was 27C. And then in third place, it was other with 8%. And then in second place, it was 23C with 23%. And quite a clear winner, it 25C was. with 63%. Well, following on from our poll, let's discuss another of the Ironman polls. It's another of their series of polls celebrating their 40th anniversary. And this time they asked, who is the greatest American male pro triathlete? And there's no surprises to hear it was Mark Allen. And we'll remember him having that big duel with Dave Scott. Well, it was 1989 that put, I guess, the pair on the map. But then it was Mark Allen who went on to win that battle and another five times. So six time Ironman world champion. Talking of inspiration, challenge are actually looking for athletes that inspire you. Now, these don't have to be top level performing athletes, but they're people who've got a story that's inspirational, someone who's motivated you, or someone you've just noticed that you think deserves a nomination. Yeah, well, this is for Challenge Prague, Davos, Almir, or Gerardsbergen, and they're offering out one free middle distance slot for a parent the mother or father of the family, and then two free junior slots for the kids' run race, and then free vouchers for the all-important pasta party. Oh yeah, well if you know someone who you think deserves this, then do let Challenge know. You can use the hashtag join the family, challenge yourself, and all about the athlete. Right now for the race news, and we've got a lot this week. We have. Yeah, so let's get stuck in. First up, we've got Challenge Riccone. And at this point, we don't know exactly what went down in the race, but we do know the results. On the men's race, it was Giulio Molinari that took the win. In second, it was Thomas Steger. And in third, it was Frederick Funk. Well, on the women's side, it was another win for the informed Yvonne van Vlerken. Second, it was Bianca Stura. Now for Ironman 70.3 St. George, and here we had a big duel between Sebastian Keenley and Lionel Sanders, but it wasn't their race all day because it was Australian Sam Appleton that had an early lead out of the swim, but the duo chased him down on the bike and they led off and hit the run shoulder to shoulder. Pretty exciting, hey? Well, it was actually Sanders that went on to take the win by a minute and 27 seconds. Sebastian Keenley in second, and then ex-pro cyclist Mike Weiss in third. Well, on the women's side, it was consistency that won. So Paula Finley, in just her third race, a middle distance since retiring from ITU, she was consistent throughout the day to take the win. It was a very strong run from Jeannie Seymour. She moved right up through the field at the end to come second. Sarah True finished in third. Well, in fourth, it was Alicia Kay. And just showing the depth of the field, fifth, it was Meredith Kessler, who last week just raced at Ironman Texas. This is only her second race back since giving birth. And she actually was in the lead for a lot of the bike, but then didn't quite have the legs at the end. Well, next up, we have the Wild Flower Triathlon, which is great to see it back. Last year, there was an omission due to a drought. It had to be cancelled. So this is the 35th year. And some exciting racing on the women's side. It was Heather Jackson, who was in great form. She won it in 2012, 2013, and 2014. But then there was a bit of a gap. She came back to get the title. So that gives her four wins, just one win behind the record of five in the women's by Paula Newby Fraser. In second place, it was Carrie Lester. And in third, it was Robin Pomery. Well, over on the men's side, it was Rudolf von Berg that spoilt the party because he broke Jesse Thomas's six time straight victory. So Rudolf von Berg took the win, Jesse Thomas came second and in third it was Nathan Killam. Now for Ironman Australia and it was the 41 year old Marino Van Hoonacker that took the win combining the second fastest swim, second fastest bike and third fastest run of the day making it his 17th Ironman wow. victory. Now he won by three minutes and 33 seconds over Luke McKenzie and in third it was Mark Bosted. On the women's side it was another older athlete who took the win. 37 year old Laura Sill came back to defend her title. She had the fastest bike split of the day of four hours at 56 and went on to win by almost 24 minutes. Second place it was Melanie Burke and third it was Kelsey Withrow. 
Next up, it's Ironman 70.3 Bustleton. Now, this race didn't quite go to plan. The weather was poor, so they actually had to cancel the swim and replace that with a 3K run. And then there was more drama for the women's race when it came to the bike, because the leading three pro women, including Sarah Crowley, the bronze medalist from Kona last year, went the wrong way. Now, they missed 100 metres on the first lap of the bike, and apparently they did double back on themselves to make up for it, but they did the race and were told that they were disqualified. So that meant that Liz Blatchford, returning after a prolonged absence, because she gave birth and then had injuries, she took the win ahead of second place Annalise Jeffries, and then third, it was Lisa Tayak. Well, over in the men's race, it was Terenza Bazzoni that defended his title, and actually making it his fourth win on the trot for 2018. Wow. The guy is on a roll, yeah, it's impressive. Well, he won by 11 minutes over fellow countryman Callum Millwood. And in third, it was Craig Alexander. Well, sandwiched between WTS Bermuda and next week's WTS Yokohama, there was an ITU World Cup in Chengdu. And it was a super sprint distance. The women's side, it was won by Emma Jeffcoat, ahead of Tamara Gorman in second, and then Fuka Sega third. Well, in the men's race, it was Rostislav Petslov that took the win. In second, it was Felix Duchamp. And then in third, it was Rodrigo Gonzalez. And finally, Xterra Uruguay. And in the men's race, it was Karsten Madsen that led from start to finish, posting the fastest swim and bikes of the day. And actually, Kieran McPherson posted one of the fastest runs of the day, but it wasn't enough to close in on Karsten Madsen. Karsten took the win, Kieran McPherson in second, and in third, it was Alex Roberts. Well, on the women's side, it was Kelly Montgomery who was first at the water, but closely followed by Carla Lapointe. Now, Carla Lapointe actually moved ahead on the bike, so she was first into T2. And then it was Carolina Nieva who had the fastest run of the day by about four minutes. Who went on to take the win. It was Carla Lapointe in second, and Kelly Montgomery finished third. Whew, that was a lot of race results. And you know what, Heather? We've just arrived in Mallorca. It's getting late. It's getting dark. I want to go and get some dinner. Yeah, I'm a little bit peckish too. I think we should leave it here and come back in the morning. Yeah, it's getting a bit cold as well. Yeah, well, we're back. A new day in Mallorca and a great pizza last night. Yeah, it was delicious. Well, we are a little bleary-eyed, but we are jumping straight back in and we are picking it up with Hot or Not. Yeah, I've got my phone out, so we're going to read off a whole lot articles. Um, first up, we've got the Women's for Try initiative offering another 400 spots for the Ironman 70.3 World Chaps. They previously offered an extra 40, now they've added to that. Yeah, they certainly have. I mean, that's quite a significant amount. They're taking them from the age group ranking points, so it means it's going to be you know, spread out from all the competitions. It's not making it um, so exclusive, I suppose. And I mean, it's great that there's just going to be more women. The Ironman have been criticised quite a lot as it is for having, you know, from the pro level, having less women than men competing. But now, you know, the age group wise, they're really broadening it. Yeah, and I believe actually they've seen an 18% increase in women's participation in sports since they've started the Women's for Try initiative, which is fantastic. That's amazing. Hot or not, Heather? Definitely hot. Cool, next up we've got a pro triathlete pushing his bike for 27 kilometres in the bike course at Cannes Triathlon, the race that we will remember Javier Gomez mm. winning a couple of weeks ago. But this, uh, this news has just come out that Sam Laidlow, who is a dual nationality, French and British athlete, um, pushing his bike for a majority of the bike course. Yeah, well, this happened 27k from the end of a half Ironman distance race. So he just shows, you know, pretty much half the course to go. And, you, you know, you wouldn't think, you think at that stage, well, really, is it worth it? But, you know, sportsmanship, he exemplified that to the max and didn't give up. And I think he couldn't even push his bike to start with because the wheel wouldn't go around because the rear mech had got stuck in the wheel. So he carried it for a bit. Then he worked out that he could actually um, get the wheel to go around. So he managed to draft down the hill and then carry it up the hill. Wow, it is amazing. And also, it's worth noting that he was on the bike, well, cycling with Javier Gomez more yeah, at the point exactly. that happened. So real shame. Um, and I think it's quite clear what we're going to go for on this. It's so a hot. hot. Uh, next up, we've got the Favero Asioma um, power meter, which we may remember the generation one power meter, which is the B Pro pedal based power meter. Now, this is essentially like an update of the Asioma pedal based power meter. Um, well, it says it's got increased um, accuracy to plus or minus 1% and it can support elliptical chain rings and apparently it's giving a bit more competition to Garmin. So. Yeah, and it's, it's worth noticing that, I mean, we all want power meters. I think everyone nowadays, mm. it's, it's the up and coming thing. And this is a much more affordable option. And from what I understand, it's got very good um, accuracy. They've had very few teething problems. So, so Mark, what is it? Ah, it's a hot. <laughs> uh, and then we have the Air Hub. 
um, which we may have heard of. It's basically a resistance trainer that works well. The previous generation of it was that it worked within, you bought the wheel and the air hub worked within the free hub to sort of increase that resistance, increase the training effect. Um, but it did get a bit of criticism for having quite a high price tag. Right. Um, and they basically brought out a new version where you, you essentially have to build a wheel, you buy the hub separately, Oof. but it's far more affordable. Okay. Well, I think that so. sounds like you've decided. I don't know that much about it. What is it, Mark? Uh, it's a hot. Um, and now we have Gwen Jorgensen racing a half marathon. Yeah, she's been gradually stepping up, hasn't she? She did start off with a 5K, then she did her 10K, and she's getting closer to that marathon debut, which I think we're all excited about. Now, it was, I think, a 111 she ran? 110.58, so one ten fifty eight. A 110.58, okay. And she um, has basically been talking about eating humble pie and being really, I think, Un unimpressed with her own performance she finished fourth so maybe it was the, the fact that she was just off the podium that that kind of exemplified that we don't know what her exact race plan was but you know she's still making that step and she's still mixing it up with the big guns yeah i mean it was the, the usa national track and field half marathon championship so she was up against some stiff competition and i understand the pace from the start was pretty hot yeah. and that possibly messed with her sort of pacing for mm. the race um but I think a 110 by most people's standards is on, pretty impressive. And going by all of her results so far, I think this is a great step for her. So it's a hot. OK, next up, we've got the 3T Carbon Crank Set, which was spotted on bikes at the Giro d'Italia last week. Yeah, it's the 3T Torno Crank Set. It's a one by Crank Set. And they, 3T as a brand have sort of pioneered the one by system for their road bikes, um, which we've seen cycling teams racing on. Um, this is a very, very light crank set. It comes in at just 330 grams for the whole crank set, bottom bracket, the crank arm. And actually, the crank arm is just 12 millimetres wide. Oh. Um, and I think actually for a lot of time trials we saw with Matt Bottrell's bike we did um, not too long ago, he had a one by system yeah. on one of his TT bikes. I think it's a very smart move for certain courses. So it's actually a really interesting option, could be a good option for some Yeah, well, some, what do you reckon? Um, yeah, really interesting. I'm gonna give it a hot. <laughs> Cool. I think before we go on to our final one, we've got one left, haven't we? The, just a reference, we are sat on the beach and there's quite a lot of noise. <laughs> so ignore the beeping, the aeroplanes and the fog horn. You can see there's a little bit of mist behind us, but we're carrying on. Let's yeah, keep going. Um, next up is some news from a power triathlete. It's George Peasgood of Great Britain. Um, and he actually got a silver medal at the UCI Time Trial World Cup, uh, which is a phenomenal performance for a triathlete to step into a, yeah, an elite sport. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, training for three sports then to mix up with pure cyclists. I think the more phenomenal. we see that, the more it really gives credibility to our sport. It's great, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. So, well done, George. And it's getting a little bit boring this yep. week. Um, it's another hot. hot. It's time for caption competition. And I did make the most of Mark being away last week with this photo. Bit of a cheesy green you had there, Mark. Yeah, I don't know where you found this photo. <laughs> Well, as you're back, you do get to choose the winner, but there were some great captions, a couple of um, references to Dan Lloyd and his beer drinking skills. And I think you know, people are impressed that maybe you're following in Dan's footsteps there. There was one from Stephen Reese. Daniel Lloyd told me it's important to stay hydrated. And then another one from Brett LaPlante. Caption, Mark, triathlons, Dan Lloyd. Yeah, I've learned a thing or two from Dan. <laughs> um, but my choice my winner for this week was from fat bloke on a bicycle he said <laughs> mark is quick to explain that his beer is draft legal very good uh, so get in touch over facebook and we'll send you a cap but for the caption competition this week we have a photo from the Chengdu world cup and essentially the winners on the podium taking a selfie with a big cheesy grin yeah yeah well please do send in your captions in the comments section below now it's GTN Pain Cave where we get to have a look inside at where you train. And our first one this week is in from Big Nate. It's his March maintenance in the Pain Cave. Now, sadly, it does sound like he's an injured triathlete who now cycles. And with that, he's actually watching some GCN. Yeah, traitor. Oh, but but sent no. it in to us, but we'll still take it. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is like a proper man cave. This, this is <laughs> you look excited about this yeah, one. It's great, yeah. He's, uh, he's clearly an avid cyclist. He's got some retro cycling tops hanging up up there. He's got a trek on his um, bike stand there, doing some maintenance on. And I don't know how many screens he's got going. Yeah. Um, 
They've all got different. He's got Cy Richardson. Oh, he's got I see all the what he's doing. So is, he's... That, is that us there? Uh, right. Yeah, no, sure. that is us there, yeah. <laughs> but he's got all the GCN That's quite crew funny. and ourselves. <laughs> Good uh, effort on that one. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> um, but that is an ultimate pain cave, that, isn't it? It really is. Cool. Nicely lit as well. Very nice. Uh, next up, we've got one from Torben Sander. He sent this in over Facebook. This is a little bit more basic, but still really cool. This is what pain caves are all about. He's on, an I think that's an elite turbo trainer, direct drive turbo trainer. He's got a Zwift setup, dual screen setup going on in front of him. He's um, got his Orbea set up right in front of the fan and next to a window, so plenty of ventilation, that's good. Awesome. Um, and then Miva Veerpan um, sent in one from Mauritius. Um, nice. They said they've been hit by a hurricane. I think this was sent oh. in a while back, actually. Um, but they said they still wanted to get their session done. I think they had a hill rep session, um, so they've sent in their turbo session on the balcony. So they've got a little bit of a view going on. Still got the race number attached to the bike. I wonder what race that was from. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like they've got GTN loaded up for oh, some videos to watch doing. Plenty of entertainment. <laughs> awesome. Well, do keep sending in your pain caves uh, using the hashtag GTN pain cave. Well, that's it for the show this week here in Mallorca. Thanks for bearing with us with the foghorn. You can see the mist is just about lifted now as we've finished. I think, I think we had everything this week. <laughs> we've we had, had aeroplanes. Yeah all sorts of tractors yeah. moving sand around. Well, anyway, um, do let us know if you're out here racing the Mallorca 70.3. We'd love to see you. Give us a shout or a wave if you yeah. do spot us. Um, and if you haven't done so already, click on the globe and subscribe to GTN. And if you'd like to see our latest Triathlon Training Explained show where we actually chat about how you split your training through the week, per discipline you can see that by clicking down here and if you do follow the Ironman races and you want to see who the new ones are to watch out for some athletes stepping up some who you might not have heard of well we've put together our top pros to watch out for in 2018 just here